How's it going, everyone? Tim here, Tier D Adventures. Hope everyone's all well out there. As always, thanks for tuning in. Much, much appreciated. Well, we're also here getting ready for the Rocky Mountain Regional Championship hosted by Team Garage Hack. And super, super excited for that. Luckily, I drive and build a ton. So actually, my, all my trucks are done. We have my class one, two, three, a backup class two, and class two and class three for the kiddo ready to rock and roll. So, so today we're gonna do some in-depth over my class one, two, and three. We have tech sheets printed and filled out, so we'll go over each little truck in detail and go over my points. Definitely super excited for this one. This is gonna be a big event, not just for the area, but this is gonna be a national level event, especially with no official Sorka nationals for this year. Uh, no rules for, no official nationals for 2023. So this is kind of taking its place because it is one of the largest events taking place this year and one of few, if not the only, that is using the current Sorka 2023, you know, the rules of the rectangle. They're using the new rules. They are in force. They are there. So this is going to be really cool. You know, we've been going through the past months, you know, building all the rectangles, making sure the circle fits in the square and the rectangle fits in the triangle. And we have trucks. So they're going to hit the tech table. We're going to pass, hopefully. And then we'll go to the rocks and hit some gates and have a great time. So first up here, we have class one. We're over here visually here. You know, nothing too crazy. We are rocking a narrowed Hilux for class one because thanks to the new rules, that is allowed now. So I chose to just simply narrow Hilux. I took kind of the easy path out and made sure bumpers, gaps, the rectangles, everything's there nice and filled. Uh, class one, my shock towers do come through the bed, but I simply took a tarp and cover the shock towers. So covers the shock towers and gains me a scale point. So that's kind of a win-win there. We have nice full 3D interior there with the trusty skeletons. A few scale accessories there in the back. We're rocking a Team Garage Hack front bumper here. A custom rear bumper here that I made as well. Underneath that body there, my class one is the Kruk Carmworks Razor's Edge chassis. Uh, I've been rocking this chassis for quite some time and have just had an absolute blast with it. It has served me well. It has done everything I've asked it to and then some. And I've just had an absolute blast with the truck. I'm super comfortable with the way everything works, performs, know what it can and can't do. So definitely really excited with it. My class one here is Air 45 Portal based. Um, just a stock rear housing in the rear. And then here in the front, we do have a Vitavon um, aluminum housing there in the front just because I can be a little rough sometimes have a tendency to break a portal axle so don't have to worry about that in the front at least and internal wise for the axles all the goodies team garage hack gears vanquish spools shafts the whole nine they're good to go shocks here we're rocking some in the works rc 80 millimeter uh, big bores wheels and tires 2.2 um, shift rc wheels and they're wrapped with some hyrax tires in g8 compound and the 2.2 I just like the I just really sort of like the look of 1.9 stretch on 2.2s and suited me well. And 2.2s definitely help with any portal clearance and stuff like that. Moving on into the drivetrain, we do have a Team Garage Hack transfer case here. This is 0% overdrive because I'm getting all my overdrive um, in my axle. And then we're pairing that to the Team Garage Hack forward motor mount. And we have modified that mount with the Moro shaft from Team Garage Hack, which takes the motor from being here where it normally would and behind the motor plate to in front so puts it again right here nice this is a better view so puts it even further forward and nice and low just amazing placement for that motor and has done really really well just like it a lot and then electronics wise you'll hear a lot of the same stuff with the other ones but we have a three brothers rc g13 pro servo here we have the in the works rc ninja winch because i get myself in sketchy situations and i need a fast ass winch so that's what we went with. And then motor here, rocking the 2100 KV V3 Yellow Jacket from Three Brothers RC. And we are powering all that with the Silent Assassin ESC from Zero Gravity RC. So, boom, good to go. That is class one. Nice, simple, ready to rock and roll. Now, the points. So class one has a maximum of 60 scale points. So how'd I get there? So first off, hard body. I'm getting all the hard body for all my sections there. Um, the Hilux body does have a drop bed that counts, and my shock towers are covered, so I will gain those points. So, I have my hard body and drop bed. Gives me 15 points in the first column. Then, moving on for bumpers, I have front and rear metal bumpers, and I do have a stinger. And because of how the rules are worded, it does not require a stinger to be on the front, so my stinger is on the rear. It just simply says a stinger has to be mounted to the bumper, so I chose the rear bumper. And I do have a roll bar here in the back that I made up, and it fits with all those rules. So that second column there, nine points. Then moving on to the next section here, do have a chassis mounted servo, 
I do have a functioning transfer case. I do have a full two seat custom interior and I do have two full size figures. So that column right there gives me another 23 points. So then to make up the last little bit I have, uh, going over my scale accessories, these lists are really nice because it gives just a really good list of scale accessories that you can use that counts. Um, I do have a crate in the back. I have rotors on all my wheels, I have a first aid kit. I have a hitch in the bed. I have D-rings, I have a license plate, sand ladder, toe strap, a winch point right here, built that onto my roll bar. So I do have a winch point or like a pendulum, anything like that is a winch point. And I do have a working front winch. And then I also have a tarp, a bed roll and a snatch block. So that right there, taking all the columns together, puts me right at 60 points. Not necessarily over. I have stuff that I'll bring with me if needed, if I need to make adjustments, but I don't go over on points because of the new rules. Regardless if it's on your texture or not, if anything falls off your truck, it's a touch repo. So I don't want any of that to happen. So I build all three trucks to their points, right at 50, right at 60, depending on the class. Class one, check, check, we're good to go. Move on to class two. And now for class two, I did choose to go Lexan for class two. So we are at a 50 point Lexan. Or, you know, interested in pointing out vehicles, whether it be hard body or Lexan, I have done a video in the past that talks about like how I tend to point out my vehicles. So that may be helpful if that's what you're looking at or trying to point out your trucks or you can follow this too, perfectly fine. Um, I did choose to go with the cliffhanger body. Uh, it has a good overall cab height and the front being pinched and the rear being pinched already gives everything good there. I don't have to do any crazy trimming or anything like that. And I just have overall good amounts of clearances. And because this is Lexan, the cliffhanger is an extended cab. It gives me the option to do two rows of interior and stuff like that. So underneath here for class two, I'm rocking the brazen mullet chassis. Now this is a chassis that I have been rocking for quite some time. Everything from the um, and original prototypes of this chassis to the current chassis as it sets. And mine here is in carbon fiber. Class two is um, F10 portal axle based. And we do have the Vanquish, the F10 portal um, covers there on the outside. Wheels here, we're rocking some super shafty 2.2 uh, V1 wheels. And they're also wrapped with some Proline Hyrax tires. And again, 80 millimeter in the works big bore shocks. And transmission wise here, I'm rocking the Exo Alpinus transmission, which is quickly becoming one of my just go-to transmissions, either the Al either the Alpinus here or the climber transmission that they offer, just because everything's all inclusive. It's all in one unit. It's got a really good overall profile and it counts as a transfer case. And the Alpinus is nice because of that dual output. So you can have 0% overdrive or 28% overdrive, which is just really nice depending on what axles you're using to build stuff like that. Or if I wanted to trail with this, I can just swap over the shaft and have 0% overdrive and trail with it. So definitely a nice feature to have. Uh, in electronics, same as class one, we have a G13 Pro Servo here. We have a Ninja Winch, rocking the 2100 KV uh, V3 Yellow Jacket. And again, the Silent Assassin ESC from Zero Gravity RC. Chassis has done well. I just had a blast building this chassis, all the different configuration stuff. So super excited to get it out um, at a nice big event like that. So now to the point sheet. So I have inner fenders front and rear. Boom, boom, you know, nice, simple. And I've started using black Lexan for the inner fenders just because I think it just gives it a nice overall look. And that black just kind of makes everything just flow really, really well. Next up here, bumpers. Uh, again, metal front and rear bumpers. And we do have a stinger here in the front. Uh, cages, interior or exterior cages. I do have an interior cage in here and I do have a two row interior cage. So I get six points for that. Uh, next up here for moving on, I do have chassis mounted servo. I do have a transfer case. I do have a full four seat custom interior. And I do have two amazing trusty skeleton drivers, the best drivers easily driver of the year also with like the interior and everything again part of the new rule with stuff falling off i put i think all of my scale accessories basically are inside the cab so they're in there and they're sealed off with the interior underneath so i don't have to worry about stuff falling out or even if something comes loose it's hopefully just going to bounce around on the inside it would be very hard for it to come out now, scale accessories i do have a crate I got uh, rotors on all four wheels, first aid kit, I have a bungee, I have license plate, a toe strap, a winch point, which actually I have a couple winch points, but I can only count one of them. So I do have a winch there, and then I have exhaust, a bed roll, and a snatch block. So just like that, pretty simple, 50 points. So there we are, and this body is fresh, no scratches. This body, I bought it and painted it specifically for the event, and it has set on the shelf the last couple weeks while I've 
beat on some of the other bodies. But 50 point Laxan, just like that. And again, like I was mentioning here with the black uh, Laxan for the Interfenders, it just kind of really just closes everything off and just makes everything just flow and just gives it a nice look. So class two wrapped up. Check, check, 50 points and all the rectangles are full. Now, last but not least here, um, my class three truck. And honestly, class three, I'm really excited for. I've had an absolute blast with this truck. Everything from build initially and everything has just worked great. I've driven the absolute crap out of this class three and I've gotten a lot more comfortable in class three as a driver. Decided to go with Lexan on class three. Um, I have been rocking the narrow tundra body, but I had an accident, so it's kind of smushed right now. So uh, in the meantime, before I made a whole nother body, I was like, you know, let me just, let me do some math real quick and see if I can get a Lexan body and point it out relatively easy. And we did. So I did quite a bit of looking, everything here on class three with bodies, trying a couple different SUV bodies and truck bodies, seeing what fit, how the profile and everything went. And I got my hands on a couple of the SCX10 Pro bodies. Now the Pro body looks great. The body overall, everything looks really good. The cab height is four inches tall on the SCX10 Pro bodies, which for class two makes it too short, but class three, perfect, right on the money. Class three, cab height, needs to be four inches. So it is right on the money. I think it came out great. The bonus here that I was looking for as well was the ability to, was to do two rows worth of interior and cages because that really helps make up a lot of points. Also, because in class three, I'm losing my chassis amount of servo points that I have from class two. So overall, I think it came out pretty good. Um, and like I said, the pro body, one, it already came pre-cut, which was really nice and convenient. It did already have holes drilled in the body. A lot of people are upset about that. I'm not, it's fine. Honestly, I could just put stickers over them if I wanted to and cover them up, but it's going to get beat up enough as it is. A couple extra holes in the bodies, not a big deal for me. The only additional cutting I did, I had a little bit of leeway room here um, in the rear of my rectangle, so I was able to trim that off. But as far as all the wheel wells here, you know, the front grill area and the rear tailgate area, all that's already pre-cut like that and has all the clearance. So, so I think the SCX10 Pro body here is almost just like a perfect class three fit. Taking a look underneath, fortunately can't see a whole lot because I added inner fenders and I decided to build my interior and everything, attach it to the chassis. But we do have the Exo Everest chassis here. Um, and I just, I've had a blast again. I had a blast with this chassis um, set up from day one to how it sets now. Everything's just always worked great for me. But so for class three, I am capper axle based um, with some super shafty CP44 axles. And they are built with all the goodies, all the goodies, super shafty axle, capper axle shafts, team ride check gears, everything there. So they are almost, they should very well be me proof at this point, which is very comforting for me. Wheels and tires here, uh, again, some super shafty 2.2 V1 off sprays. And these are wrapped with some cut and shut 5.25 tusks um, that I made myself. And inside there are the 2.2 anti foams that I also um, did a video and some working with. And they have everything there is also worked great for me. And again, we have some 80 millimeter in the works big bore shocks. So 80 millimeters on all three of my trucks because they're all portal and that's what I like. And unfortunately from underneath and where my tearing is, can't see a whole lot of everything else. But transmission wise, we're also rocking the XO Alpinus transmission. Same that's in my class two. And then electronics wise, we're rocking Three Builders RC G13 Pro servos, front and rear. Um, servo winch in here is actually an NSDRC, the RS400, which is like a low profile servo. I got that in on trade and it found its way into this build and it's worked great and it's force capable. So I didn't feel the need to change it out or anything like that. For motor, we're rocking the Three Builders RC black jacket um, in 2000 KV. So that is the sensor version, but I'm running uncensored because I'm running it with, again, the Sound Assassin ESC. Definitely nice that all my electronics are basically interchangeable between all three classes. So if something does happen, I have backup electronics. I can rob parts um, as needed. Also, I do have backup trucks that I'll have with me as well. So I don't think anything will happen. But just in the case, it's always good to have backup stuff or stuff that can interchange um, between builds and classes. And now for the points. Uh, class 3 also has a 50 point max, just like Class 2 does. So again, take a look at how I got my points. So we have um, inner fenders, front and rear here. We have metal front and rear bumpers, and we do have a stinger there in the front um, cage. We do have a two row interior cage there, and we do also have a roll bar here on the back of the cab. I'm not proud of that, but it counts. That's all that matters. Um, I do have a transfer case, thanks to that uh, Alpinus transmission. We do have a full four seat custom interior, as well as again, two of the most faithful skeleton drivers on the planet.
Uh, moving down onto scale accessories, again, very similar. Um, I put a lot of my scale accessories inside the cab area, attached to the interior. So again, just hopefully it doesn't come out and anything that is on the outside is bolted down. So we have a crate, we have rotors on all four wheels, we have first aid kit, um, we do have a fuel cell. Again, not proud of it, but it counts. Uh, we do have a bungee back there. Uh, we have D-rings, we have license plate, we have a sand ladder, a uh, tow strap, a winch point. Uh, we do have our working winch. Um, we have exhaust, a snatch block, and a bed roll. So just like that, 50 points, Lexan class three, and we are ready to rock and roll. All three classes, one, two, and three as well as a class two and class three for the kiddo. Um, he's ready to rock and roll as well. Um, for his class three here, where he's gonna be rocking a caber axle based uh, brazen high-low. And for class two, he also is gonna be rocking an AR-45 portal axle based uh, brazen C1 Pro chassis. As far as in depth on his, nothing has changed as far as his actual build from the time I did the videos on them previously to now, except they just got hard bodies put on them. I mentioned I also do have a backup class two going with me just in case something happens or if I'm just not feeling portals or whatever, I have a backup class two in case something happens. Or if someone, I guess, needs a class two, we do have a class two. Um, and this is my SCX10 Pro um, with the brazen pace setter chassis. And it's the same as the last couple SCX10 Pro videos that I've done. Nothing's changed. I added a couple axial option parts and it's good to go. All pointed out, ready to rock and roll. And I think it looks pretty good. Looking at class one, two, and three, I think you can see a little uh, theme of the paint job there. All three of them have a anime or manga style paint scheme it is a paint theme that i really really enjoy and actually have a really good time setting it all up and painting them out because they honestly even if i make a mistake i can make the mistake look good in this style and stuff like that but nonetheless i think between the three of them i definitely probably have a shot at a good uh ugly duckling there i'm sure i think i have a solid chance between all three of these just just a slight chance that is all three in depth for the rocky mountain regional championships again just a couple weeks out Really excited. It is going to be a great time. It's going to be great to just see everyone, hang out with everyone, meet new people as always. Get on the rocks, smash some gates, and have a good time. I uh, hope everyone else is having a good time getting all their trucks ready to rock and roll. We're going to have a blast. I hope you did enjoy the video. Uh, if you did, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, any comments, questions, anything like that, as always, put them down below. Do my best to get everything answered. Again, super excited for this. I'll do my best to get other video uh, in the meantime while I'm up there. Until next time, everyone, have a great one. Crawl on.